Hello, welcome and good evening, and yeah, I'm back after quite a bit of a break, which is due to me having been sick since Easter. I'm feeling much better now, and I will pick up on a more regular pace again with the videos, and today I want to do just a very small thing. So I picked up a couple of months back two of these devices here. Uh, this is an ESP8266 Node MCU module, uh, originally by Wemos or something, but I think this might be at least the PCB here uh, might be some some clone. And this module here is probably the genuine thing. And yeah, it's a microcontroller with Wi-Fi embedded. And microcontroller controller means it doesn't run any particular operating system, it is much less powerful like for example a Raspberry Pi Zero, but it runs at I think 80 megahertz or something, which is pretty fast. It supports 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, has this neat little printed antenna on top, and you can get them for very low prices. So I bought two from China for I think two euro fifties each, which is crazy cheap considering the high component count here. And you can get them, you can get just this module here, which is actually sufficient. However, um, for prototyping this is much better because this is sort of like a breakout board. The spacing on this uh, board here is weird. It's like two millimeters or something instead of the 2.5 millimeters that you're used to. This here also has data port, serial chip, so you can simply uh, program it from any Arduino IDE. And yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. And after prototyping, you can of course then uh, make this smaller by picking up a few more of the single microcontroller units and using those. And today I just want to show how to set this up uh, on macOS, like a dummy version, um, if you don't know anything about this. I don't know what the flash button is about, um, but the reset is basically reset button, the flash button, I don't know. Maybe it erases the flash? I don't know. No idea. Never used it. But um, yeah, as it says on the back here, First install a driver for the uh, serial chip, then use 9600 boards to connect, and three connect to Wi-Fi. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's a couple more steps than that, but uh, they're sort of right. So we can attach this to a USB lead uh, to our Mac here, but the same stuff goes for Windows and also for uh, Linux, of course, and uh, it won't do anything right now, but in the top corner here, there's an LED, which is wired to GPIO pin two on this device. So it should be the same as, I guess, D2, maybe? I'm not sure. But it's uh, you can access it as GPIO pin two. And we'll have a look at the, at the Mac now. Okay, first of all, we will install the driver. So I'm using Brew for this, as usual. If you search for CH34, you will find a so-called cask driver. Uh, casks are binary objects, and uh, those can be downloaded as well. You just write Brew cask install, and then the name of the cask that you want. And here we have this driver for the serial chip on this device. I will probably say that I already have this and I won't reinstall it now, but you can just install it, uh, reboot your system, that's important, and then you can check under dev tty. There's a ton of, <laughs> there's a ton now, of course. Um, let's see, yeah, here you should see a dev tty. WCH USB serial or also a USB serial and yeah these are the devices that you will need. Um, 
Okay, given that you have that, then you can go to arduino.cc and then go to software downloads and download the Arduino IDE. Just pick whatever operating system you are using and yeah, you can of course donate or just say download if you already donated and it will take a few minutes and already installed it here. And the important thing now to do is one thing, you go to the settings of the Arduino editor and you paste this URL in here. If you search for Arduino ESP8266 you will find this, but I'll also put it, uh, this link in the description. It's basically a link to a JSON configuration file to get all the support for the ESP here in this thing. After you've done that, it will download a bunch of things and you will have uh, support for uh, your different node MCU boards and other things. For example, here I can see uh, in the board selector I get new stuff from the ESP8266 library apart from the standard Arduino AVR modules. And there's a bunch of things and I think we actually have a lowland something, but I just picked Node MCU 1.0 because I think this is supposed to be a Node MCU module and that should work. Uh, you can also pick just a generic ESP module or whatever you have, Spark Fun. There's a lot of stuff in here. And the upload speed, yeah, you can start with 9600, but that's really slow. So just pick something useful like 115,000 bits per second. CPU frequency, 80 megahertz is usually enough. Flash size, I don't even know what the size here is or what spiffs is, but I kept it at the default. And yeah, this works for me, the port. Yeah, you can pick it here. And this one here works well. In theory, you can also use Bluetooth for programming, but I don't think that they support this. This is probably just uh, available on my iMac. And what does it look like? So um, I never programmed Arduino before, but I figured out. Uh, this is like the Hello World example that I got. Every Arduino's catch, that's what they call the programs, is a C-like program. So we have a function or a method setup, which is void, so I call it a method or procedure, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, setup procedure. And you can do all kinds of setup stuff here. For example, we will say that the GPIO pin number two should be used as an output pin here. And that's the pin for the LED that I talked earlier about. And then there's a loop function. There's always a setup and a loop function. The loop function gets executed after setup is done and it runs forever until you shut down the uh, little microcontroller. And what will it do? It will uh, pull pin to high. Funny enough, uh, when I tested this, this will turn the LED off, although it says here on. But that might be due to my weird cheap board or something. I'm not sure. Delay 1000 will wait for 1000 milliseconds and then it will write a low value to the same port and again wait for 1000 milliseconds. So in theory this should give us a blinking LED and sure enough we can test this, right? So I'll click here on upload and we will take a look here on the board. It's now blinking rapidly while it's uploading the binary of the compiled um, little program that we have. And it takes quite a while because it's a serial port and yeah, it's only running at 115,000 bits per second, which is like 10, 12 kilobytes per second or something. So it's, it's crazy, crazy slow. Went out of the camera view here. And now it's done. And as you can see, there's a nice and steady blinking. So this is basically the hello world. We can actually access the GPIO pins and do some stuff. And you can control 
almost everything, anything that you can imagine with these little devices. Uh, the advantages, they need very little power, they are cheap, and yeah, um, not such an expensive and hard thing to set up like the Raspberry Pi can be at times. Also, it doesn't have a operating system which might interfere with like critical timings and stuff like that. So um, in the next episode I will enhance this because my actual goal for this is to make a little sensor to measure the air quality in my um, living room and sleeping room. So uh, we will attach two sensors to this and use some libraries to read out those sensors. I hope you learned something from this. Um, I will put a link into the video description for uh, the Arduino IDE and the uh, link where I bought this or where you can probably buy some of these and also the link to the uh, board manager library that you need for the Arduino IDE. Other than that I hope you enjoyed this and please share a like and most important of all please do subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.